that's the other topic that we just touched on is calling in VR. And, and I just had a really interesting experience with, with a form of that, with um, a fully volumetric uh, video of a person being live streamed into my headset and uh, really? in real time, like talking to them. When? Yeah, <laughs> this was, um, so this was like two or three days ago. Um, this company called EF, I think, uh, EF Eve, but they're, uh, I forget what company is called, what, what EF stands for, but um, I'll have everything linked in the, the description. But um, so they are basically a volumetric video uh, platform and they're using Connect and real uh, um, Intel's real sense sensors uh, to you know, essentially create a 3D v version of a person only by using two sensors. So the, the, the call I had was them using two connect without a green screen in a, just a normal lit house without any special lighting on the person. Yeah. I, you know, I saw that they were just had like lamps in the room and, um, and we actually were, we had an, we were talking on Google Hangouts at first and they were just like, oh, do you have our app? And I was like, sure. They're like, okay, put it on. Like we, uh, we're going to call you with that. And so, okay. Like I put it on and then suddenly I get a Skype call, like a Skype looking message <laughs> and I accept it and boom, right in front of me pops in the woman I was just talking to. And, um, I still had the Google Hangouts call open. So I was kind of like checking the latency and it was like maybe a second or two off, but it was, I mean, it was mind blowing. I was like able to like look around her, rotate her, make her big or small. And like, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't have the setup on my, on my house, but it gave me a taste of like, this can Whoa. definitely be a thing over the next however many years. Um, and it feels cool. Like it feels like this is, I don't know exactly what situations it will be better than, than phone calls or texts, but you know, there are situations that it makes sense. Um, and I think that's what we'll, once there's more users and, and, you know, better integrations into these systems, we'll figure out those, those use cases. Um, but I mean, it, it, it's not a new thing that, or so I've discovered people on Reddit have been like, oh, the, you know, the, the professor in, in UC Davis has done this, you know, five years ago. I mean, that's, that's true. It, it's not the first that I had seen, but like, it was the first time I tried it on a consumer a device on a mm -hmm. consumer app in my house that I didn't even know I had. So, um, that was new to me. Well, and so I guess, do, do you have any thoughts in terms of like, you know, your communication seems to be a, a big aspect that you're really interested in, Ian. Um, yeah, where, but, where are we now and where do we see it yeah, going? So I was thinking about while you're, while you're talking about that, um, Balenson's book, his second book that just came out, uh, experience on demand. He basically, uh, flat out says pretty bluntly in the book that he doesn't think until we can reproduce all of the intricacies of face-to-face -face interaction that VR will take off on. Maybe it's reversed. Maybe he says that the killer app for VR is capturing all of the intricacies of interpersonal communication. And there's, a, there's an experiment uh, that I believe he describes at one point talking about how um, in a in a small like setting of a couple people in a, like a circle, they charted out all the little ticks and body movements that people uh, have with each other, and it's it's basically described like a like an invisible ballet of all of these little things that you do um, to tip off the people around you that they're ready to you're either ready to listen or you're ready to talk right. or the other people are going to talk and you're trying to express that you're into them and what they're saying. Yes. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible how much of that is lost even here. Like right in here, we've got a little bit of our shoulder movement. If you bob your head up a little bit, right, you've got your head movement. We're in big screen right now talking. I can't remember if we said that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we, we can see you, you can get the, like I'm using my hands to gesture that I've still got more to say. And there's a million more examples of that in in face to face communication, and Balenson's book points out that once we're able to do that and it feels completely normal, that's when VR takes off on a scale. And I don't know how many more sensors we need for that really to to take off. I, I don't know how far off that is. Um, and yeah. do you think do you think one iteration of that becoming a thing will be less of like actually 
putting sensors around your room to capture yourself in a volumetric sense, and more of uh, the sensors that will be integrated into our headsets, the eye trackers, the face trackers, the mouth trackers, right? Like, that's is, the direction. 